Hello everyone, uh, my name's Matt. Uh, welcome to Cement Pleating. Um, I'm going to give you a, a small talk about the company, what we do, how we do it, um, and uh, I'm going to tell you some of the, uh, the do's and the don'ts, um, some of the things that you can do with pleating, um, and then we'll talk about some of the basics. So what's a flat pleat? What's an accordion pleat? What's a sun ray? Um, and then <coughs> we'll talk about fabric choice. So what fabrics are best to use? Uh, some fabrics you can't use, we'll talk to you about those as well. How you can test your fabrics so that um, if you want to get some pleating done, you don't have to send your fabric first, you can have a little test. Um, and then at the end, um, we'll talk about how you can order your pleating. Um, so first of all, just to get started, a brief history uh, of the company, a brief history for myself. Um, uh, the company is now 100 years old, or uh, founded in 1925, so uh, 96 years old. Founded by a guy called Franzi Cementi, um, and, his, and that's where the name comes from, F Cement Pleating. Uh, so over the years we've been known uh, in the industry for the couture side of the industry, so um, smaller orders, um, and most, most of our clients, uh, most of our big customers, are do the high end of the fashion industry. Uh, talk to you about some of our, uh, some of our clients. Um, uh, just before that, uh, cement pleating has been in my family now for about 60 years. So my granddad took it over, um, then my dad, and then oh, uh, six years ago now, um, I took it over. And uh, it's brilliant. I love it. I love, the, I love coming to work every day. I really enjoy it. And uh, hopefully I can uh, impart some of that enthusiasm over to you today. Um, let's talk to you about some of our most famous clients. There is one lady who's probably the most fam famous client we have. Um, that is Her Majesty the Queen. Um, as you can see, uh, we've been pleasing for her now um, probably as far back as um, the 1960s. Um, we did some work to, uh, this week for her um, through some of her dressmakers. Um, and uh, yeah, so she's our most famous client. On top of that, you have, we do a lot of work for high-end fashion designers. So people like Alexander McQueen, or companies like Alexander McQueen, Victoria Beckham, uh, America Transu, Ralph and Russo, uh, Erdem, um, and uh, we also do a lot of work for the high street chains, but not the actual chains themselves, the designers behind that. We don't actually do any of the bulk work for them. Uh, most, of, most of the pleating is, uh, is most Bulk work pleating is done in the Far East these days, so places like as far afield as uh, India and Sri Lanka and China, uh, they're the people that do most of the bulk work that you'll see in, in, the, uh, in the shops. But So we do the pleating for the companies that sell in Britain um, for garments that are generally between £500 and upwards. Um, we also do a lot of work for uh, film and studio, uh, theatre productions, TV, uh, the most famous TV show we did, uh, just going to grab a grab one of these, uh, is for this show. This is Game of Thrones. Obviously, for those of you who don't know Game of Thrones, um, it's probably one of the most successful TV shows of all time. Um, as you can see, this is Donet, no, Daenerys Targaryen, and that's her cloak. Uh, we pleated about five or six different costumes for her over, over different seasons. Um, another famous one that you see a lot of cosplayers wear and we've repeated this on a number of occasions for cosplayers as well. Um, other people that we pleat for, uh, this young lady, this Lady Gaga, there's another picture. Uh, this one's quite an interesting um, dress. Uh, this is made up of, um, she's actually wearing metres and metres and metres of a shower curtain. Um, so shower curtain fabric that uh, we got sent, uh, we cut it into certain shapes, uh, we pleated it in sunray, so it's about 330 different sunray in one dress. Um, it's called the living dress, if you go onto YouTube, um, you, you'll find it. Um, so yeah, lots of different costumes and different um, projects that we, we get involved with that we get really excited about. So um, that's a bit, a bit of a basics about um, about the company, who we are, what we do, um, and who our, who our big clients are. But we do a huge amount of work these days for students, which is why we're talking to you today. Um, 
a lot of students uh, send us their work um, and they start sampling and then uh, we'll do the samples for them and then they'll send in some more work uh, and we will liaise with you on a regular basis. Um, we'll explain to you right at the start how you get your pleating done um, and then we'll talk, to you, we'll talk you through the whole process uh, um, as and when we receive your fabric. So let's talk now about some of the basics. Um, the first basic type of pleat that we'll talk about is uh, it's of, often known as a knife pleat. We call it a flat pleat. And this is the this is the this is the pleat. Okay, this is a two and a half centimeter flat pleat. What I mean by two and a half centimeters is the distance between each line once it's pleated is two and a half centimeters. Okay, if you pull it out, one side of the pleat is five centimeters, the other side is two and a half. And what this does is it gives the pleat a direction. Okay, so imagine you had the hem at the bottom and this was the waist. Okay, the pleat, as you're looking down, it points to the left. So we would call this a left hand pleat. Um, one question, or two questions we often get asked is how much fabric do I need? On this particular pleat, it's three times the amount of fabric to your finished size. So if you send us three meters of fabric, we'll send you back a meter of pleated fabric once it's all folded up like this. The other question, um, do we need to hem your fabric first? Absolutely, on a flat pleat, you definitely need to hem it first. If you're going to hem it, you need to do that before you send it to us. Although, I wouldn't cut the shape of your garment out until you get the pleated fabric back, because you're never 100% sure how much this is going to shrink. When I say three to one, that's an approximate, um, and that will change depending on fabric of, uh, the thickness of the fabric and the size of the pleat. So, that's the basic knife pleat. Very simple, very easy to use. Um, Lies base flat against the body, um, gives you a lot of nice movement and flow with your, with your fabric. The second basic type of pleat we do is this one, it's called an accordion pleat. This is a one centimetre accordion, which basically means that the distance between each line is a centimetre. Okay, if I turn it this way you'll see it has a thickness to it which the flat pleat doesn't. Okay. Um, and we're often asked about ratios on this one as well. We do say roughly three to one, but as you can tell, you can have uh, less of a ratio if you so desire by just pulling the fabric out tighter, and that would help it cling to the body slightly more. Um, the other thing about this one is you can hem this afterwards. Uh, if you do though, if you hem this afterwards, you'll end up what we do, what we call fluting the bottom of the fabric. So the, 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 the pleat will straighten out and that will give you a nice fluted effect to the bottom. If you like that effect, then you, then you hem that afterwards. If you don't want that effect, you want a nice straight pleat, then you need to hem that first as well. The next pleat I want to talk about is the most common pleat, the one you'll see in the high street if you go and buy a, a pleated skirt, and that's the sunray. Uh, a sunray, as you see from here, is a circular pleat, okay, which causes all sorts of problems for people but it is actually very simple. It's a very easy pleat to work with um, and it's very versatile. So uh, a sunray, uh, we pleat in half or quarter circles. You can't pleat bigger than a half circle. So you can't give us a full circle or three quarter circle. We'd have to cut it down to a half. Um, and it's an accordion pleat that graduates. It starts off small at the waist on this side and ends up bigger at the hem, okay? Uh, so calculating how much fabric you're going to need for a sunray. Um, if you're going to make a, a skirt, a circle skirt that's a metre long, uh, what you're going to do is have to add at the top an extra 10 centimetres onto that metre. So that's going to give you a radius. What I mean by radius is the, the distance from the centre point to the hem. Okay, That's going to give you a radius of 110 centimetres. So um, you have to double that for a half circle, so that's 220 centimetres for a metre long skirt. Uh, there, is a, there is a calculation and, and um, on our website, on the sunray section, we've got an instruction page, you can look at that. Um, this is what we call a number three sunray. Okay, this is the most common one that we do. Um, and then I've got a couple of other sunrays behind me. Brand new sunray, this one called Razor, and another brand new sunray called Scallop. Okay. Um, no one's used those yet because they've only been out for a month. So um, that'll be something interesting to see. Um, so that's the sunray, okay? Very, very simple. And as I said, very versatile. 
You don't need to use it as a skirt, you can use it on the arms as a sleeve, you can use it on the legs as clots, um, you can invert it and have it go. We've seen people having that over the shoulder, um, lots of different ways that you can drape a sun ray. Um, and so, and it, as I said before, it's, it's the most common um, pleat that we do. It's probably about a third of all the pleating that we do is a sun ray pleat. Um, let's talk about fabric choice. Now, fabric choice in pleating is really important, okay? Really, really, it's vitally important, um, and uh, some fabrics work much better than others, okay? So, fabrics that are nice and crisp and quite light, like uh, organza, for instance, pleat and hold the pleat beautifully, okay? Um, fabrics that are soft and stretchy, like a jersey, uh, that we can pleat them, we can put the lines in them, but after that, um, all you can see is the line and the fabric doesn't actually hold the shape of the pleat very well at all. Okay, so fabric choice will affect the look that, of the pleating um, quite dramatically. Uh, I did tell you that I, I talked to you about how you can test your fabric. So, a good way of testing your fabric is to put two folds in, so make a flat pleat. Okay. Um, put your fabric down on the ironing board and get some printer paper or some card, put that over the top and then steam iron and steam it for 20 to 30 seconds and then let it cool down. Okay, once it's cooled down, use it either using a suction table or just leave it there for a while. Then open your fabric and have a look at the lines and see how those lines affect the fabric. Okay, and that will be a good test to see whether your fabric pleats or not. There's a couple of fabrics that just don't pleat at all, so the, the main fabric is nylon, okay? Nylon, we, we can pleat the fabric and we can put the lines in, but very, very quickly those lines disappear, okay? Um, and what we call fade out over time. Um, they'll do that within a few days. So nylon, I would strongly recommend you don't use. You can use nylon polyester mixes. Uh, a lot of chul is a nylon polyester mix, and that, they, that pleats quite nicely. <laughs> But again, the pleat does expand slightly over time. The, the best fabric to pleat by far is polyester. Okay, polyester is really good because the melting point of polyester is lower than the, the temperature that we use in the steam cabinet. Um, so what happens is we heat the fabric up and in, in a polyester, the polyester melts into the shape of the pleat and that's what we call a permanent pleat. I'll give an example. Okay. This was pleated roughly 20 to 30 years ago. I'm not sure the exact date, okay? It's been on our sample rack ever since. Um, it's been played with, pulled around, um, scrunched up, draped, and it still looks exactly the same as the day it was pleated. Okay, so good polyester is your friend when you're pleating. In order of, of suitability, I would say polyester, then a polyester mix, so a polycotton or um, Poly nylon or poly silk, and then after that, I would say probably silk, then wool, uh, then cotton, and then afterwards nylon. So those are the, the, those are the, the, what the fabric are made of. Okay, so made, this is made of a polyester. Okay, um, and then you, you obviously have silks, but you can have the same style in a polyester as you can in a silk, for instance. Uh, poly, uh, so you can have a georgette silk georgette, and you have a polyester georgette. Okay, looks similar, um, but they pleat, uh, and the pleats last longer on a polyester. So if you're going to make a garment that's going to be sold over and over again um, in a shop, and, and people are going to be washing it, then you, you have to use polyester, because you can stick that in the washing machine at 30 degrees, and when it comes out, if you hang it up, it will look exactly the same as before you put it in. The fabrics that you can pleat and work really nicely. Uh, I'll give you an example, two examples. Uh, this one here. This is uh, plastic leather, okay, also known as pleather, um, and that pleats absolutely beautifully. The other thing you can do, uh, the other fabric that pleats really well is real leather. Um, this is a lambskin, okay, and this is a pine tree. Uh, you can't, you wouldn't be able to pleat a cow skin in this because it'd be too thick. So um, if you're going to send us leather to be pleating, try and make it a really supple leather like a lamb or pig skin, okay. The other thing you can do for pleating, say you're going to pleat cotton, okay, or silk, 
and you want the pleat to last a long time, um, what you can do is we can back the pleating with a bonder web on the back just to hold the pleats in place. And we've got a white and a black backing that you can choose from. Um, and talking about uh, content of fabric and how it looks, I'll just give an example. Um, so this is the smallest pleat we do. This is a crystal pleat. Okay, I'm going to show you four different crystal pleat, pleated fabrics. They're all going to look slightly different. So that is a basic, basic blue polyester. This one is a black leather, a black pleather, sorry, plastic leather. Um, this one is a striped fabric, okay. So, yeah, so the pleats uh, are running this way, okay, and the stripes are running this way. And this is the same fabric, but we just turned it 90 degrees and the pleats are running parallel to the stripes, okay. So you can see, you can see just from the same pleat, you can get four totally different looks. So if you could imagine lots of different fabrics, lots of different prints, and then the, the massive variety of pleating that we do, uh, then you li the, the limit to what you can achieve with pleating is, is, is limitless, really. Um, and one last example, fabric choice. Okay, you can combine pleats, by the way. Um, these, th this one I'm going to show you now, this is a flat pleat. So this one, this, this here, is flat pleating, okay, parallel to my hand, and then we've turned it 90 degrees and we've crystal pleated it parallel this way, okay, and that's giving you a flat pleat. Now, this is a taffeta, and taffeta's really good for pleating because it's very stiff and holds the pleat really nicely. I'll give you an example, I'll show you what I'm talking about. You can actually, because it's a two way pleat, you can actually pull this out and that creates a lovely ruffled effect, okay. And the only reason we can do that is because it's a taffeta and it's that fabric that will work really well. This is exactly the same pleat. So flat pleat followed by a crystal pleat, but it's on a Georgette um, and it doesn't, if you pull it out, it just springs back into place. Right, so um, we're gonna give you a little example and show you how we go about pleating some fabric. Uh, just a really quick example. And we're going to use um, we're going to use a, a mold over here. So I'm going to bring you over here. Come and follow me. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this piece of fabric, and we're going to create an arch with it using just folded folded pleats. Okay, so it's going to be able to stand up on its own afterwards. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this mold here. This, this mold we've named Becky. Okay, named after the student that first used it. Um, and she used it to create some very lovely shoulder pads. So um, when we hand pleat, what we do is we have to create these moulds first, and we have to create two of them. And the two moulds are, are exactly similar, exactly the same. Okay. Um, and to pleat them, what we have to do is we have to open the mould up, take the top layer off, put the fabric in, just like that, and then we put the top mould back over the top, like so. Okay, once we've done that, we sandwich the fabric in between the two pieces of card, like so. Okay, and then we tie this up and we put that in our steam cabinet for 30 minutes. Okay, now um, a lot of people ask us, do, are there any chemicals involved in pleating? No, there's not. We don't starch any of the fabrics. All we do is heat your fabric up. Um, and, and into the shape of the moulds that we have. And as you can see around, if you have a look around, we have probably a 1, 1,500 different moulds and patterns of pleating that we can achieve here. Okay, so that one we would have to steam uh, for half an hour, let it cool down for another half an hour, um, and then reverse the process. But we can cheat in true Blue Peter style, uh, we prepared one earlier. Okay. There's the mould. Same mould as, as Becky. Just got to pull it down slightly. Uh, 
and we separate the two. And then that lovely flat piece of fabric, we've created a 3D shape out of it. It's as simple as that, but it's not as simple as that. Uh, making the moulds is very time consuming <laughs> and uh, technically quite challenging if you don't know what you're doing. If you're interested though in uh, learning how to make some of the moulds like this or even some of the basic moulds so that you complete your own fabrics, um, then you can come and intern for us. Now obviously you're in the middle of the pandemic at the moment, um, that, that will change in the future. Um, and when that stops, we will advertise for uh, interns uh, for a week or two weeks on Instagram. So we do have an Instagram page. Uh, if you just type in at pleat into Instagram, you'll find us, Cement Pleating. We've got about 700 posts. We've got over 7,000 followers now. So we're building up quite a nice following. Um, so please follow us on Instagram and when we need an intern, we'll put it on there. Uh, and you can just send me an email and say, Matt, I'd love to intern for you. Um, and these are the dates I can come along. And then I'll e email you back and we'll sort out a date for you to come down and work for us. Now, when, when you do come down and work for us, you'll be doing lots of stuff, lots of pleating. Um, you'll be helping us uh, with our pleating. Um, but we'd encourage you to bring lots of fabric down so you can pleat your own fabric while you're here. Um, and we won't charge you for any of the fabric you get pleated while you're here. Okay. So if you're interested in that, follow us on Instagram, and then after you follow us on Instagram, um, we'll, we'll advertise when, when we're taking interns once more. Um, how would you order pleating, and how much does it cost? Okay, although we do work for um, a lot of the high-end designers, that doesn't mean we're that expensive. So I'll give you a rough cost, including shipping and VAT back to you, three meters of a, a flat pleat, plus shipping, plus VAT, will come to just under £40. Two, two semicircles um, of fabric done in a sunray pleat plus shipping um, and VAT, again, just under £40. Okay? We do have an express service. Our express service we can do in a day. Our normal service takes up to a week, but it can be quicker. Um, all the instructions on how to order pleating are on our website. What you, go, what you do is you go onto the website on the order tab you then download the order form, which I have here, fill in all the details. Some of them may not be applicable to you. The ones that are really interested though are, are your phone number, your contact name, um, your delivery address, the pleat you want, how much fabric you've sent us. Okay? Fill all those details in and then um, when you send us fabric, also program our, our landline number into your phone so that when we call you to ask you questions about your pleating, you'll know it's us and you won't ignore the phone call. Okay? What's the most frustrating thing is that someone asks for an express service, we phone them, they don't pick up and they don't get back to us until the afternoon and then we can't do the, we can't do the pleating until we've spoken to them. So vitally important that you answer your phone calls when we call you. Um, so that's the order form. Uh, I can't think of any other things to say, any other questions you might have. Um, so thank you for watching, thank you for listening. Um, and hopefully we'll see some of your orders in the near future. Thank you very much.